Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me virtually in this online extravaganza. So I know the original title of our talk was What's New in Firebase for Backend Game Developers? But hey, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about Cloud Firestore, what it is, why you should care, and maybe why that database engineer next to you just got really excited. So as you may have heard, Firebase has a number of tools to make it easier for you to get your game up and running. The general idea here is, hey, why don't you let us take care of the boring infrastructure work and you can focus on other tasks like making your game fun, which, you know, probably should be your top priority. So we provide services like Firebase Authentication, which makes it super easy for your user to sign into your game from a variety of different providers. We have Firebase Hosting. The idea with this is we can make it easy for you to get a website up and running quickly on a global CDN that's SSL by default and all that great stuff. And this is really nice if you have like, say, a one-off marketing site for your game that you want to get hosted really quickly. We have Cloud Storage, which is a powerful yet simple service for storing large binary objects. And this could be user-generated content like screenshots or videos or content you provide like, say, chunks of post-install game data. There's Cloud Functions for Firebase, which lets you essentially run backend code without needing to stand up any servers on your own. And then we have our databases for storing data in the cloud. Now, the real-time database is the one many developers have heard about. This is Firebase's flagship product back when it was its own independent startup, and it is still a great product. The idea here is that if a user changes the value on one device, our SDKs and servers automatically update that change on every other device that's listening to that value. And yes, I should note that real time here means something a little different than what you game developers are used to. It's a few hundred milliseconds of latency, so probably not suitable for powering your first person shooter, but you totally could use it to drive, say, a bingo game. In fact, here's a fun fact. The real time database was used to power Loteria. This is the bingo like game that ran as a Google Doodle. This ran on the Google front page in over a dozen countries, and the real time database took care of like the matchmaking, the calling out the square, showing your opponent's moves in real time, and declaring a winner. And what's really neat is this game went from zero players to millions, like literally overnight. We started displaying it on the Google front page. Turns out Google gets a lot of traffic. Who knew? And the real-time database just kind of handled it all. There were no panicked calls to engineers or anything. And in fact, we have a really nice blog post going into detail around how the engineering team did all this. And I encourage you to read it for more information. And that's nice, but for many native app and web developers, we've introduced the next generation of the real-time database, a product known as Cloud Firestore. And all in all, it's been a really well-received product, except for the fact that there are no client libraries for C++ or Unity until now, or I guess a few weeks ago, when we announced that it's available as an alpha release. And I am going to talk more about that alpha tag in a minute, because that's kind of important. Now, maybe some of you are super excited about this already and are like running off to build your own like composite indexes or what have you. But for the rest of you who aren't big database nerds, you might be asking yourself, well, I guess this is good news and all, but what does this really mean and why should I care? So let's back up and explain. Cloud Firestore, like the real-time database, is part of a family of databases known as NoSQL databases. And if you want the overly simplified version of what that means, well, think about a traditional database. You have like a bunch of tables, each of which stores types of highly structured data. And you can join these bits of data together using a query language called SQL. And you can do a lot of fancy stuff here, right? You're like you can merge in different pieces of data or like calculated pieces of data from all sorts of different tables. Um, and while that's pretty neat, performance can be quite variable. This query could take a long time or a short amount of time, depending on like how much data I have, how it's set up, and what kind of query I'm asking for. Now, NoSQL databases are different in a few important ways. One thing you'll notice is that they tend to be a little more loosey-goosey with their data. Officially, this is known as being schemaless, and it's often seen as a good thing. Like it gives developers the ability to iterate a lot faster on their underlying data without having to worry about sort of backfilling every change they make to all their older records. It also gives you the ability to store data that's similar, but not exactly alike. You can see here, I'm storing a bunch of characters together in the same collection. And yeah, sure, they're similar, but I can go ahead and add like a spell book for my mage and a battle cry for my fighter and a set of lock picks for my thief. And our database isn't going to complain that our data structure isn't exactly alike from one character to the next. It can just kind of handle this. But I think the biggest difference with a NoSQL database is the fact that there is no SQL. Queries tend to be a lot simpler. You don't get sort of all those fancy joins that merge all that data or calculated data together. And this means you'll often see things that look kind of strange or unusual at first, like having copies of the same data exist in multiple places. Now, some of these quirks, particularly this concept here, which is known as denormalized data, kind of freak out longtime SQL developers at first. But in the long run, there are some really nice trade-offs that make some of this weirdness worth it. 
For starters, NoSQL databases can scale horizontally. And this is really nice. This basically means that as your data set gets bigger and bigger, you can just kind of throw more and more machines at it, and it will go ahead and simply serve its data across all these different machines. And uh, that's really helpful in a cloud-hosted environment like, I don't know, say just to pick one, the Google Cloud Platform, where we have tons of servers we can just flip on and off as your database needs it. Your database simply grows and expands onto these different servers kind of behind the scenes and without your even knowing that, that we're doing all this work for you. By contrast, traditional SQL databases tend to scale vertically. This means that as your data set grows, you need to find bigger and bigger computers to host them on. And that can be problematic. For, for one thing, at some point, you're probably going to run out of massive supercomputers to run your data set on. And it also means that every time you need to switch out to a bigger and faster supercomputer, there's probably going to be some downtime. And often with NoSQL databases, you will find that performance is better. In fact, one thing we are fond of saying in the Cloud Firestore world is that queries scale to the size of the result set, not the size of the underlying data set. And what does that mean? That means that if, say, you had a game where you were storing user-generated puzzles in Cloud Firestore, and you asked the database, hey, send me the top 10 active levels in the United States sorted by rating, that query would take the same amount of time, whether you had to search through 300 records or 300 million, right? No matter how large that underlying data set gets, this query will basically take the same amount of time. And that's pretty great because it means you generally don't need to worry about having to like restructure your database for performance reasons as your game gets more and more popular. So let's go over a few other features that makes Cloud Firestore generally enjoyable to work with. Uh, for starters, the data structure model tends to be pretty, pretty nice to work with, particularly compared to something like uh, the real-time database or other NoSQL databases. All of your data tends to be stored in documents and collections. Now, documents you can think of as, well, documents that contain key value pairs. And the values of these things can be anything from like arrays to strings to floats to JSON-y looking objects to even small amounts of binary data. Now, these documents can be up to one megabyte of data for each document, which actually is, is pretty large, given that you're mostly dealing with like text and numbers and JSON-y things here. Now, these documents are stored in collections, which are, as you might suspect, collections of documents. And these documents can and often do point to sub-collections that contain other documents, which might even point to other sub-collections and so on and so forth. Now, one important note here is that all queries are shallow, meaning that you can grab a document without having to worry about grabbing all the data underneath it. And that means you can structure your data hierarchically in a way that makes sense to you logically without having to worry about sort of grabbing tons of unnecessary data every time your user requests one of these documents on the top here. Cloud Firestore has really robust offline support built into all the client libraries. So the SDKs will cache your data automatically as you grab it from the server. And then if your user were to like hop onto an airplane, turn on airplane mode, they would still have access to all the data that's cached on the device, which means they can keep playing your game and you can go ahead and query any data that's stored in your offline cache. In addition, any writes that your players make, they get queued up on the device. And then as soon as your user goes back online, they're delivered to your database in the order that they were recorded, so none of their gameplay session data gets lost. Cloud Firestore has support for simple one-time fetches of your data, which is probably what you're used to if you're coming from a more traditional database. And a lot of developers start using Cloud Firestore this way, but you can also add real-time listeners so that your client gets notified right away when a value in a document changes. And that's pretty neat, right? Like you simply tell the library, hey, I want to listen to the results of this query, and Cloud Firestore can send you updates when these values change, which means you don't have to deal with any of that pull to refresh nonsense. Your new data just appears as soon as it's available, which is great for situations like multiplayer games when you want your game state to be updated after a user has taken their turn. Cloud Firestore has multi-region support, which means that we can store your data in different locations a few hundred miles apart from each other. And this is really nice from a reliability standpoint, because if, like, say, some kind of radioactive lizard or what have you were to take an entire city offline, your data would still be accessible from these other regions. But at the same time, it's strongly consistent, which means that the data you're retrieving is the latest version of the data that's been written to the database, sort of no matter which region your client originally pinged. And uh, I'll be honest, having this sort of multi-region support while also being strongly consistent is this like really amazing and difficult problem that we've solved behind the scenes for you. And honestly, I don't think people really appreciate how cool this is. So trust me when I say, hey, this is a pretty neat problem we solved. Cloud Firestore also has support for atomic transactions if you want to make sure some other client isn't messing with your data the same time you are. Uh, I don't have a slide for that, but I know it's a thing people care about, so I'm going to mention it here. 
And because we're all making games and we know we can't always trust our clients, we also have support for cloud functions and security rules. Now, security rules are rules that you define that will reject requests from the client, either where your client is asking for data they shouldn't be or they're trying to write data that doesn't look the way you expect. But if you need more sophisticated controls, you can use cloud functions. These are serverless functions that run in the cloud in an environment that you control and trust. And that means you can make sure this functionality is consistent across all your clients. And more importantly, you trust the changes that they make to your database. So I know we've talked a lot about Cloud Firestore, our real-time capable NoSQL database that lives in the cloud. And you might be asking yourself, well, wait a minute, how's this compared to the Firebase real-time database, the real-time database that lives in the cloud? And to be clear, you don't actually need to choose one or the other. You can totally use them both within the same project, depending on your needs. But if you needed to kind of compare and contrast the two, I generally like to think of Cloud Firestore as like a heavy duty version of the real time database. Um, in general, I think it can handle more complex data better. This is kind of my personal opinion, but I think the data model is easier to work with. Uh, you have more powerful querying capabilities. Uh, your transactions are a little more sophisticated. It scales even better than the real-time database. And you have multi-region support for better reliability. There are a few things that the real-time database does better, though. It tends to be somewhat faster if your customers are located in North America, and it has built-in support for presence. This is something a lot of game developers care about, sort of having players find out if their friends are online. Now, there are workarounds for this in Cloud Firestore, but it's sort of not natively built in, and it's not as elegant as what's in the real-time database. Also, the pricing model is different. In the real-time database, your costs are primarily based on the amount of data that you're sending back and forth to your clients. Cloud Firestore's costs are primarily based on the number of read or write operations you perform. So in general, the real-time database is going to be a little more cost effective when you have lots of small operations. Think of a game like bingo or poker, where your clients are very frequently sending across little pieces of information like call, raise, or you know, B14. Cloud Firestore tends to be more cost effective when you have smaller amounts of maybe large operations. Think about like an asynchronous drawing game where you're probably sending across like a large chunk of JSON data that represents the player's drawing. Or even like a turn-based word or chess game where your players tend to think for long periods of time before they take a turn. They're not performing that many operations. But I would also say don't get too fixated on price. There's lots of ways Cloud Firestore can make your life easier. And you know, your engineering time costs money too. If it takes 10 extra engineering hours to save yourself like 18 bucks in server costs, that's probably not the right, right trade-off. Use your engineering time wisely. These people tend to eat fancy snacks. So how would you use Cloud Firestore in real life? Let's look at a few potential real world scenarios. One of the most simple use cases, saving your player's game to the cloud, right? Your users want to play their game on multiple devices. And Cloud Firestore makes it really easy to save your game state to the cloud. Just write your player state into a document, write that document to the database, and any other client listening to that value can grab the latest version and make sure your player's progress is reflected everywhere that they're playing your game. I should also point out that storage in Cloud Firestore is relatively inexpensive, particularly compared to the real-time database. So you could go ahead and save a few versions back so that when your player frantically calls customer support and they're like, ah, something's wrong with my game, you have the option of restoring them to an earlier save game. Another good use case for Cloud Firestore is like shared game state. Think about a turn-based word game or drawing game. It's really easy for, for starters for your clients to go ahead and query for games that they're participating in. And then every time your player wants to take a turn, you can just record that new game state in this shared document that all the appropriate players have access to. And then thanks to the magic of real-time listeners, those other players' clients can get updated as soon as the game state is changed so they know it's their turn. And if you want extra security, rather than having your clients update this document directly, you can have them relay their desired move to a cloud function. Remember, these are our serverless functions that live in the cloud. This cloud function can then validate your player's move make sure everything looks legit, and then it can perform the work of actually updating your shared game state, which then gets sent to your other players. And also, thanks to our integration with Firebase Cloud Messaging, you could send a notification to your other players so that even if they don't have your app open at the moment, they can still get alerted that it's their turn. Daily challenges, these are probably another good example. These things are sort of decent chunks of content that you're going to need to send to all your clients every time they sign in. I know there's a lot of like role playing games, puzzle games, crossword puzzles, and so on that have daily challenges. And this is data that could easily be stored and served through Cloud Firestore. 
User-generated content could be a good use case too. Again, for large binary objects like videos or screencasts, I'd recommend using cloud storage. But think about any kind of like puzzle game or platformer game where users are creating their own levels. This is probably data that you're storing as JSON data, and these could work nicely in Cloud Firestore. And then again, you could run queries like find all puzzles created in North America sorted by rating, or find most recent puzzles, or find all puzzles by a particular author. But I think the most interesting use case, particularly for a lot of larger and more established companies, is to use Cloud Firestore as a real-time, globally scalable caching layer on top of your current infrastructure. Let's think about an airline for a second. These airlines, they've got like their 30-year-old legacy servers with a bunch of business logic and regulatory compliance built in. They probably just can't like swap everything over to a brand new NoSQL database, right? But at the same time, maybe they want a nice modern application infrastructure that can like handle millions of queries and have real-time updates and nice offline support and all that fancy stuff, right? Well, what these businesses can do is copy over some of their data to a Cloud Firestore instance. That makes it really easy for these clients to you know, do searches like let's find ticket prices or get flight status information or that sort of thing and get those updates in real time while leaving your legacy server to handle important things like, say, purchasing a ticket, stuff that probably still needs to go through that original server. Now, if you've been watching this presentation, I'm guessing you don't have an airline to run, but maybe you do have an MMO, a collectible card game, or a role-playing game where you have a ton of data, whether that's sort of gameplay balance settings or player profiles or what have you, that your clients are going to want to read in on a regular basis. And again, that's a lot of clients that are constantly hitting your servers. So consider putting Cloud Firestore in front of that, right? Your clients can go ahead and query the data that you've pushed to Cloud Firestore while leaving your original server free to handle important things like, you know, player transactions or user purchases. Now, with all that being said, maybe you're super excited to start building with Cloud Firestore, but I do want to talk about that alpha label here. While the Cloud Firestore backend service has been around for quite a while and is used in real production apps, these new client libraries are very new and haven't really been battle tested yet. So expect bugs. There will probably be some. We know that some advanced features are missing from the Unity SDK. Uh, some of the more sophisticated queries aren't available yet, and things like numeric transforms aren't supported yet. And we fully expect that the API surface will be changing over the next few months. So you are going to have to rename your methods at some point when you update your client libraries. So I would encourage you to start giving these new libraries a try, see how they would fit within your game's infrastructure, and of course, send us feedback, but maybe hold off on moving your entire business to a Cloud Firestore based one until we're, you know, like a few more months along. So with that scary disclaimer out of the way, I hope we've gotten you at least a little interested in using Cloud Firestore in your latest game. If you want to find out more about Cloud Firestore or any of the other services we offer, head on over to firebase.google.com games and check it out. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>